Could the latest Pac-12 scandal impact conference realignment? Now, the Pac-12 has a Larry Scott hangover, as conference insider John Canzano stated in his latest story at johncanzano.com. A scandal has erupted on the West Coast as two Pac-12 executives, that's Pac-12 Network President Mark Shuckin and CFO Brent Williams, were dismissed by Commissioner George Klavkov with approval from the Pac-12 Board of Directors for failing to report overpayments from a media distribution partner now revealed to be Comcast. The undisclosed overpayments total over $50 million, dating back to before 2016. Uh, The conference issued a press release detailing a timeline of the events. Let's go on and go through some of those. In spring 2017, the Pac-12 brought in an auditor, and in that audit concluded a distribution partner had overpaid the Pac-12 networks for 2016 by a material amount. The two terminated employees knew about the audit results in December 2017, and they never informed the Pac-12 board of directors or the external auditors of the financial risk associated with the audit finding. In October 2022, Comcast then claimed it had been overpaying the Pac-12 each year since prior to 2016, and claimed that the overpayments totaled more than $50 million. The next step was the Pac-12 hired independent legal counsel to review the situation and to conduct an independent investigation, which then found all the things that we now know, which led to the termination of the two senior executives. Now, we're talking major money here, and I, I believe that this constitutes being called a scandal or a disaster or whatever other adjective you can come up with. Uh, This is a disaster, especially as the conference is trying to negotiate their upcoming media rights deal. Nobody has really explained where the money went, how they're going to pay back Comcast, how they'll be able to sell the Pac-12 networks to a streaming company now that they owe money to the distribution partner, etc. Like, I've got to imagine George Klyovkov, the current commissioner, is losing his mind over the situation because any goodwill that he had built with media partners has to be second-guessed at this point, even with the Pac-12 doing the correct thing and firing the two individuals that had knowledge of it. Now think about this. They knew about this for over five years, and they never informed the new commissioner or the board. Now if I'm a current Pac-12 member, if I was already feeling out other options like, I don't know, maybe the Big 12, I'm definitely making some calls at this point to figure out exactly what my other options might be. Now this is an egregious mistake, and that's putting it mildly. Imagine that you find out that your partner of decades in this case, the administration, has been cheating on you for over five years. And you only find out because the mistress actually tells you, in this case, Comcast. But the partner tells you it's going to be okay. They've gotten rid of the bad part of himself, uh, in this case, the specific executives, and he can change. Now, how likely are you to ever be fully trusting again? I'm not sure how the conference recovers from this. It's certainly something to keep an eye on, uh, because I'm not sure who is going to want to get into a deal with them while this is hanging over their head. Now, in that, I was discussing the schools that currently make up the Pac-12 there, but Let's go ahead and extend this out to expansion possibility. At Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormark has specifically stated that his conference wants to be on the West Coast in that fourth time zone. Now, even if the 10 Pac-12 schools decide to stay in, could something like this make schools like Fresno State or San Diego State, who Dennis Dodd just had a great in-depth article about their realignment desires over at CBSSports.com, would it make them more likely to jump to the Big 12? I mean, there are only so many options for schools that fit the geographic footprint and academically with the Pac-12. Now, if you're attempting to defend the Pac-12, I get it. The two rogue execs are gone. The money is less than $5 million per school when you really weigh it out. Uh, But when your media rights deal is already paying less than nearly every other Power 5 conference, that's money that schools and the conference cannot afford to be paying right now. And this is an absolute mess for Klyovkov and, and company. Psst. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course, jump in the comments. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.